Hi, welcome to Don't Be Slow to Save Your Site. We're so glad that you are here. Let me introduce myself. I'm Brenda Fishbaugh, president of iPro. I've been in the tanning industry over 30 years. And in addition to my passion to get people to wear eye protection, I love photography and I love protecting endangered animals. So I think that will come through in that you're going to be seeing my animal photos during this presentation. Love for you to take my email, brenda at winkies.com. So if you have any problems getting your goodies that we're offering at the end of the program, uh, you need your state laws, uh, any questions that you have about eyewear, inspector issues, just please email me. So for every person who takes this training, I'm donating a dollar to the National Geographic Photo Art presentation. I'd love for you to take a look at what that involves. Hi, I'm Joel Sartori, a National Geographic photographer and founder of The Photo Arc. The Photo Arc is a 25-year project to document every captive species on Earth, half of which will be threatened with extinction in the coming decades. The goal is to get the public to care and be moved to save species while there's still time. We use studio lighting and black and white backgrounds so that all animals are equal. A mouse becomes as charming as an elephant, a tiger beetle, as magnificent as a tiger. We've photographed thousands of species over the years, working at hundreds of zoos, aquariums, captive breeders, and wildlife rehab centers. We give the pictures away, free of charge, to each place we work. The photo art gives a voice to the voiceless. For many animals, this is the only time they'll be photographed well, and the only real publicity they'll ever get. The pictures are archived and distributed by National Geographic which means that each animal could eventually be seen by millions of people. In the end, the species brought on board the ark serve as a symbol of conservation that can encourage people to care. But we must act quickly. For many species, there's no time to lose. Your support of this project, from spreading the word on social media to donations, is critical to keeping it going. Thank you. a donation to the National Geographic Photo Arc to get us started on this. So for every person who takes this training, I'm donating a dollar. So if you think about the thousands of people taking this training worldwide, we can really make a difference together. So we want you to have something too. We're giving you a certificate for becoming an eye protection expert. It'll be personalized with your name and we'll be sending that out. Now hang on to the end because I'm going to be giving you a secret and a secret password to be able to get a lot of goodies that we're going to be sending you. So you'll want to have your paper handy to write that down. There's no other way to get it other than the slide I'm going to give you with a special website uh, that's not available any other way with our password. We're also going to give you our social media badges. It's great for your website, great for um, placing on your social media to show what a professional salon you are. So I'd love you to uh, number your paper from one to 20. You will need a paper. We're gonna do a quiz and see how you're doing. You can pause this presentation at any time if you wanna see how, uh, if you wanna answer the questions more thoroughly, if you're in a group or anything like that. So let's see how smart you are about eye protection. So the first question is, what's the number one reason tanners seek medical attention after a single session? Is it that their body sunburn? Is it tingle products making them think they have a rash? Is it sunburned face? Or is it photokeratitis? Now think about this. Why the heck are people seeking medical attention after coming to a tanning salon? They should just be leaving tan and looking great, right? But we're not. We're sending people to get medical attention worldwide, which is insane. So let's look at what this reason is. The number one reason is corneal burn. It's damaging your eye. It doesn't even have to be a full session to have photokeratitis. Your eyes can be closed. And it is a red, itchy, watery eyes. Very painful. I uh, have to go to, to a doctor and get special drops uh, to kill the pain and uh, ha often have your eye bandage. 
it, uh, it really weakened your cornea to have this done. Uh, the FDA reported 12,000 tanners per year. Now, I'm hoping that our trainings have made a difference on this. So I'm actually getting new numbers from the Food and Drug Administration. So you can email me for that information when that information is finally available. But we can cut this number down to zero if people just wear the compliant eyewear for their country, right? So to help you educate your tanners on this, we've created a new item called Stand Up for Eye Protection to explain it. And you'll purchase a, just a plastic uh, stand, display stand at your local office supply store and put in our double-sided sheet in that for people. And this is very easy, quick wipe down uh, for cleanliness in your salon. So there's the information on photokeratitis you'll be able to share with your tanners right away and just hand them that stand. So that was our first question. Our second question is now uh, that was after a single session. You can get photokeratitis, but what about if they've tanned multiple sessions without eyewear? What are they likely going to experience? Color vision loss, night vision loss, cataracts, or macular degeneration? So uh, this is actually a multiple answer. So choose carefully after about 20 sessions, what would people notice? It's A and B. Color vision and night vision will start to dimension, diminish very quickly. And let me point out that photokeratitis and night vision, color vision all happen indoors and outdoors. It's accumulative based on your experience with both tanning indoors and outdoors. So let's talk about night vision first. So that's when it's really hard. Drives. You might have parents or grandparents that don't want to drive anymore at night. You don't want this to happen to you. It's very scary when you don't see the lines and you can't read the signs. Uh, and so make sure you're wearing sunglasses outside and wearing compliant eye protection inside. So for color vision, we're going to actually just take a color vision quiz together. So I have an animal in this square. Can you see what animal it is? Now this is not color blindness, which is a male trait, uh, mostly male trait, blue greens and um, red greens and uh, red browns getting confused. And this is where your rods and cones are damaged and you don't see the variations in simple colors. So this is a butterfly. I'm gonna show it to you again. It's a butterfly. And here's another animal. It's an elephant. It's an elephant. So this is what you can uh, share with your tanners with our sheet. We don't want you to lose your color vision. Only tigers look good in black and white. So here's uh, what you can share with your tanners to help them understand what can happen. So if now you've tanned several years without eye protection, what are you likely to experience? So what of those choices would you choose? It is cataracts and macular degeneration is the answer. It does take longer, but it does happen. Again, this is cumulative from both uh, outdoors without wearing sunglasses and indoors not wearing compliant eyewear. And here's the information you can share with your tanners right on that sheet that's going to be in your, stand, your plastic stand-up. Question four, the skin around your eyes is very resistant to UV damage. Is that true or is that false? And the answer is false. Carcinomas are found near the eyes because of delicate skin. So we uh, want to be wearing our eye protection and avoid these kind of damages. It's the thinnest skin on your body around your eye. So and here's the information you can share with your tanners. So what are alternatives to wearing compliant eye protection? Sunglasses, closing your eyes, towel over your face, cotton balls, all the above, none of the above. It's absolutely none of the above. Cotton balls, t-shirts, towels, are SPF 5. If water goes through it, UV goes through it. That's why they have uh, UV protective clothing. So they're not protecting your face, they're not protecting your eyes. Sunglasses will give you huge raccoon eyes, and of course, lots of ambient light comes in the side, particularly with uh, in tanning beds where the light is all around you. So they're not protecting your eyes well and they will give you really weird tanning lines. 
which isn't an FDA Canadian or European eyewear law. So although the Food and Drug Administration in the U.S., Canada, Europe, and, and other countries also have different laws, they all are the same on all of these but one. Blocking UVA, 99%. You've got to wear eyewear when you indoor tan. Blocking 99.9% .9 of UVB. Closing your eyes when you tan or the eye protection must be see-through. What is not part of all tanning laws? It is closing your eyes. Most people will guess it has to be see-through, but eye protection must be see-through in every country, and that's so that you can get out of bed in an emergency without taking your eyewear off, and you can change the fans, check the time, whatever, without lifting up your eye protection. That's why all eyewear has some type of lens or is see-through like disposables. But closing your eyes blocks under 25% of UV, so you do not, that's not part of the law to close your eyes. That's not helping anything. So are you confused about your laws? It is very confusing right now. We have some countries harmonizing. We have some countries uh, like, like England leaving with Brexit. So uh, if you have questions about what your country or your state is doing currently, email me at brenda at winkies.com. Question seven, are salons required to provide free eye protection? And this is a U.S. question, but I'll answer it for countries also. Uh, depending on the state of the U.S. is one answer. Uh, yes, you do have to provide free eye protection. No, you do not have to provide free eye protection. And in the United States, it is a by state. Ohio, Pennsylvania, Texas do require free eye protection at the moment. New Hampshire, Iowa, and Kentucky require that you do not have shared go goggles, that you have your own eye protection, and all other states can choose whether they provide for free or whether they sell eyewear or some combination of both. Now, this is also in flux. Pennsylvania is looking to move to states can choose or that you're required to have your own eyewear, and New Hampshire is looking to move to that you uh, can choose. So again, just check in with me if uh, you have a question about that. If you are in outside of the United States, eyewear does not have to be provided for free, but it does have to be provided. In every country, you have to walk into the room with uh, compliant eye protection. And on to eight. So I said that uh, New Hampshire, Iowa, and Kentucky require tanners to have their own eye protection or disposables, that you can't do community goggles where the salon is cleaning them and then leaving them out for people. Is that because they want the salons to make more income? Is that because they're trying to stop spreading diseases with community goggles? Or is it they didn't know that salons could sanitize goggles? And the answer is that they're trying to avoid eye infections when tanners wear their own eye protection and use disposables. So that's why some states require that everyone own their own eyewear. Obviously, they're more invested in it. They're going to keep it cleaner uh, and a, a great way to keep infections like pink eye down. So what's the best eye protection for stand-up units? Disposables, goggles with straps, holding two goggle cups in place while you're in the stand-up, or you can put the goggle cups in your, kind of in your eye sockets and squeeze to hold them in place while you're in the stand-up. It's obviously disposables. Medical adhesive holds disposables in place against those big fans in stand-ups. There's no nose bridge or straps through the hair. Disposables also have great visibility. Do make sure that your clients are putting together the disposables properly and they're wearing them properly so they're not upside down or anything like that. They're made uh, properly to hold on with those big fans going. And we're going to have a word from our sponsor, and that's always me. So I think the best eye protection is Winkies. Uh, there's no nose bridge. You can see the whole nose is... is um, completely doesn't have any straps over it or anything like that. You're not, nobody wants to put a string through their hair. Medical adhesive holds them in place. They have great visibility so you can be dancing around in the stand-up and not be crashing into walls. This is our product, Ultra Gold Winkies. It comes flat, it's dispensed, so it's not exposed to um, 
contaminants, and then you fold it into a cone and put it on your eyes. The fold goes at the top. And we're back to our regularly scheduled program. This is my husband and I in Kenya, and those that's a pod of hippos behind us. So question 10, what's the most commonly caused from improperly clean goggles? What's the most commonly caused? So we're looking for a simple one answer here. Conjunctivitis, molluscum contagiosum, colds and flu, or herpes simplex. What are, is the most common thing to get from improperly clean goggles? It's colds and flu. Our eyes are mucous membranes, and that's why your mom told you to keep your hands away from your mouth, keep your hands away from your eyes. That's a straight pathway into the body. And so you want to make sure that you're keeping your goggles clean and that will keep the colds and flu down. These can also happen. Conjunctivitis is pink eye, herpes simplex, uh, and molluscum contagiosum. So you can use our stand-up eye protection to explain this to your tanners too. This is the second side of it and uh, it has this piece right here about colds and flu and how to avoid them by keeping your goggles clean. So what step is not required to clean goggles? So uh, they need to be stored in a closed container. They need to soak for 10 minutes. The quat strip test uh, needs to be used at 700 parts per million, that's a, like a litmus test. Change your solutions daily and allow to air dry. So one of those is not required for goggle cleaner in every country. And what is that? It's air drying. You don't want it to pick up contaminants in the air. Don't do this with your goggles. Don't put them in a basket where somebody's reaching in and touching multiple pairs at a time. Think about it like a toothbrush. You wouldn't want people reaching into a basket and touching three or four toothbrushes at once for somebody to use a toothbrush. This is the sheet that we're going to provide you from the Environmental Protection, uh, uh, Protection Agency on how to clean goggles if uh, you provide them in a salon. You'll, there's several steps to this that are important. One of them, especially for bed cleaners, is you need to use a litmus test every time, every day to test that you're mixing it properly. It's not a glug, glug, glug. It's not adding more to the formula. You don't want it too, too strong or it will hurt people's eyes and you don't want it too strong or it'll hurt their backs when they're laying in a tanning bed. And uh, step four is very important. You need to do it for 10 minutes. You can't just throw goggles into a container and then pull a goggle out and hand it to somebody. You can't spritz it with your bed cleaner and then hand somebody that goggle. One, it needs to soak for 10 minutes to do any good at all. And it also needs to, uh, just like bed cleaner, you put it on, you leave it on for a minute, you just don't wipe it off. Then uh, you need to rinse it to get off that very strong chemical that's killing, you know, COVID and MRSA and all sorts of other things. You need to rinse that off unless it specifically says in your product that you do not. You want to keep them in a covered container so that they don't get contaminated. And just uh, the same as bed cleaner, you need to change it every 24 hours. That is required by every single manufacturer of bed cleaner worldwide. So you don't want to be making up a month-long supply. It loses its efficacy. If you test it with a quad strip, you realize you're just putting water on the bed. So here's goggle info you can share with your tanners on the uh, double-sided sheet we're providing you. Question 12, how can tanners avoid getting eye disease from goggles? A, clean their own goggles after every use, keep goggles in a plastic bag, use disposables, or all of the above. And the answer is D, all of the above. Uh, we uh, want uh, the owners of the goggles to clean them themselves. We want them to dry them thoroughly so they don't become a little Petri dish. We want them to put them in a little snack bag. I highly recommend you buy the little snack plastic bags and you hand that to everybody who buys a pair of goggles and you hand them a rubber band so they can rubber band that on their lotion bottle. And of course they can use disposables. That's a clean, easy, one-time use product, uh, no hassle. So I mentioned disposables. What's the biggest benefit? We're looking for the single biggest benefit. 
Is it that there's no straps? Is it that there's no nose bridge? Is it adjustable to fit the shape of the eye instead of, you know, one size goggle fits everything? Is it that it's easy to see through? Is it medical adhesive holds it in place? Or is that no chance of eye infection? What is the single biggest benefit of disposables? And absolutely, it's, it's that it's a one-time use product and you throw it away after use. And this is a social media meme that we have that explains that you wash your own goggles with antibacterial soap, you dry them, and then you uh, store them in a resealable bag and handle only by the outer rim so you're not getting your hands all over them. Think about it like the toothbrush. You don't want your hands carrying your toothbrush with your bris holding the bristles. Or you can use disposables. And a word from our sponsor. So this is our product line Winkies. We have uh, Winkies uh, Ultra Gold, we have Lash Room Winkies, and we have Winkies Dark. They're adjustable to fit the shape of your eye. They all have great visibility and a complete UV block and meet the laws in every country. 14, should you carry eye protection for longer lashes? A, it's not important. B, yes, you should. C, no, you don't need to. And the answer is absolutely yes, you should carry some type of eye protection for longer lashes. Lots of women have lash extensions. They're not able to wear traditional eye protection. And uh, they've spent a lot of money on those lashes. So provide them a product where those lashes will fit. We like our Lash Room product. You can see how deep the cone is here on the eyes. You still have great, amazing visibility to be able to adjust the, the tanning bed. And uh, they're just a really comfortable, easy to wear product. Same price as Winkies. And back to our regularly scheduled program. Question 15. Why don't about half of your tanners wear eye protection? So some will argue with me it's not half, but certainly a big chunk of your tanners are not wearing eyewear. They're, uh, maybe they're on their phones or something like that, but they're not wearing eyewear. Is it because the salon staff doesn't wear eye protection and so they're not making a case? Is it that tanners don't know they can damage their eyes um, and that's why they're not wearing it? Tanners don't think your shared goggles are clean and they don't want to wear them. Staff isn't verifying tanners have eye protection. Uh, tanners are trying to avoid raccoon eyes or F all of the above. And of course, it's all of the above. Uh, tanners have lots of reasons why they're not wearing eyewear. I really recommend you write this, this down, which is may I see your eye protection, please. And that every single person, every single time, asks that it's in your salon. It's a double ask. It's very polite with may I and please. But the only thing they can do is show you eyewear. They can't um, uh, say that they don't have it or whatever. They're going to have to show it to you. And I personally recommend you change it to, may I see your eye protection and lotion, please? And everybody asks it every time. And you take a look at their lotions and make sure they're not using oils on the bed and SPFs and all those other crazy products we see. And uh, if you can, touch the bottle to make sure it has some lotion in it as uh, so many times it's empty and they're just using it to show you a bottle. Question 16, what reduces raccoon eyes? And these are called panda eyes in Europe because they don't have raccoons. So is it uh, bronzer around the eyes uh, reduces raccoon eyes? Is it removing your makeup before you tan? Because makeup has a lot of SPF in it and so that leaves big raccoon eyes on the face. Is it moving eye protection slightly so there's not a straight line? Is it using adjustable disposables to fit your eyes or is it all of the above? And yes, there's lots of things you can do to eliminate panda eyes. And we have a sheet we're going to provide you that's going to come in your pack that has 10 different reasons. This is a great role play with your staff on discussing different ways with people that they can avoid getting raccoon eyes. Question 17, is eye protection required with red light? Um, a, eye protection is not required. B, it's not a law, but it's a smart policy. C, it is a law just like UV tanning. 
And the answer is B, it's a smart policy. Red light's very bright and can damage your eyes. And this is a little different in Europe, um, and these laws are changing worldwide about red light, blue light, infrared. And um, But the point I'd like to make here is that if it is not required in your country, it is extremely bright. It can damage your eyes. You really want people to wear a, a good eye protection for that. Eye protection for indoor tanning does not have to protect anywhere near the red light, blue light, infrared spectrum. And so you want to make sure that you're wearing a product that really cuts that light down and isn't so uh, uncomfortable for the people doing a red light treatment. Is eye protection required when spray tanning? Eye protection is not required. It is a law just like UV tanning or it's not a law, but it's a really smart policy. And the answer is, it's C, it's, uh, it's a really smart policy. In the US, Food and Drug Administration strongly recommends wearing eye protection when being spray tanned. The reason is, is that DHA, the tanning ingredient, was made for an application like a lotion, and they didn't, at the time, did not know that it was going to be sprayed on people. And here we have the mucous membranes coming into, into play. The FDA strongly recommends that eyes, nose, lips, and uh, genitals are covered, our mucous membranes are covered when you're being spray tanned because DHA is directly entering your body. It's like opening your mouth and drinking it. And so they want you to protect your eyes from the DHA. It is not a law currently, uh, but it is, it is important to consider that. And at minimum, minimum, offer it to every single person who comes in. Are spray tan techs required to wear eye protection? It's not a law, but it's a smart policy. It is a law, just like UV tanning, where eye protection is not required. Um, requiring eye protection for spray tan techs is not the law anywhere in the world, um, but you really want to keep that overspray out of your eyes, especially if you're working in a tent uh, and, uh, or you're doing a party at somebody's house and you're spraying a lot of people. It's all about ventilation. You don't want that overspray going in your eyes. Again, it is a, um, it's DHA. It's entering straight into your body through your mucous membranes. 20, is eye protection required when changing lamps? Eye protection is not required. It is a law, just like UV tanning. It's not a law, but a smart policy. And wearing maintenance glasses is a very smart policy. It's insane not to wear them. That's a huge amount of UV being exposed to your eyes when you're changing out lamps in a salon. So we're going to have a word from our sponsor. So this is a Winky's Dark. This is our red light product. Um, and uh, on some things like the um, very strong units, double up your Winkies. Put two on top of each other. That will really cut down the amount of intense light. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, a lot of goggles uh, and eyewear aren't made to block it. For example, regular Winkies are useless, I think. I don't. That's why we invented this, is that I started doing red light and using Winkies, and, and I, I just hated it. It was way too bright and gold. This is one of our social media memes that you can share. Best eyewear for naps and red light. Really great for keep the lunchtime tanners, the migraine sufferers, the hangovers. They really love our uh, Winky Stark. And it comes in a 50 pack, so you don't have to buy a whole other box of product. This is our Sunless Clear. It also comes in a 50 pack. And it is meant for wearing when you're in the auto booth. I love it because I can see and keep my eyes open and hit the spray and then turn around and um, not bang into stuff. I really like it a lot. And I really like it when I'm being spray tanned by a tech because I can keep my eyes open and see what's going on. I don't really like being naked and have my eyes closed. Very uncomfortable feeling. And then uh, these are our sunless specs for spray tan techs. Extremely light glasses, extremely inexpensive, so easy to wipe down after they get that DHA spray on them, and uh, just a simple, easy way for you to protect your eyes, very, you know, hardly show up at all. 
And this is our UV blockers, same type of glasses uh, for UV block wire changing out lamps. Will fit a woman's face, will fit a man's face. So I hope you've stayed smart. You won't forget what you've just learned. And let's see how you did. So take a look and see how you did and see if you uh, need to repeat and rescore yourself. So what's available to educate your tanners about eye protection? Our tanners quiz, uh, eyewear column in I IST Magazine, uh, Winky's website and Facebook, the Stand Up for Eyewear, sheets, thousands of tanning memes or all the above. And this is all of the things that we have provided for you to educate your tanners. We're gonna be sending you um, a lot of um, sheets that we discussed, You'll have our YouTube on how to fold Winkies, have our website, you'll be getting our badges, and a whole bunch of samples that we'll be sending out to you. So we also have thousands of tanning memes that we'd love for you to go out to uh, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, and Facebook and grab those, and we love shares. And I mentioned a secret site to get your certificates and for us to get your proper salon mailing address to mail you your package with everything in it. So you, this is the address. You're going to go to www.ipro.net slash training. Very important to get that down exactly. That is not available anywhere else but right here. And the secret word is photo arc. And the, you'll be asked a secret word so we know what your package you're getting ipro.net slash training. So because you took this training, I just donated a dollar to the photo arc. So thank you so much for that. Here's the letter that uh, Joel Sartori, the photographer that we saw, a fantastic photographer, uh, has sent me for thanking me for the donation that we made to his cause. Salons like you, we're making a difference. Thank you so much.